welcome to this new topic of this Icelandic channel. The scientists have recently informed Icelanders that we have five volcanoes ready for eruption. What volcanoes are we talking about? How dangerous are they? And will they affect the rest of Europe or the whole world? My name is Gilvi and I will be your guide for today in order to lead you through those questions and I will add the useful links below in the same timeline as the video runs since it's plenty of material online. This is first and foremost a simplified overview and hopefully a useful beginner's guide as well over the natural forces underneath my country. As we start the tour I wanted to know that we will be using a nice little online tool called map.is and I'm clicking on an option that offers me the possibility to see all earthquakes that's gone on for the last six months. Our first destination is the youngest part of Iceland, or where the Reykjanes Ritz comes to shore, and is still creating the Reykjanes Peninsula, close by Reykjavik. This is where the bridge between continents stands as symbol for the tectonic plates, the plates that are forcing Iceland in opposite directions, creating faster and cheaper airfares to USA and Europe in just few million years. As we move up the Reykjavik Peninsula, we can see that the earthquake tremor belt goes close by Reykjavik, but the name Reykjavik means smoky bay, and the name comes from the local hot springs, and the springs are hot because the capital sits on hot area. Scientists have in recent years told us that the 7 to 900 year interval between Reykjavik eruptions has already passed, meaning that the complete Reykjavik Peninsula area, extremely close to Reykjavik, is ready to erupt. But even so, I think it's very unlikely that Reykjavik will be hit by any disasters. It's however worth mentioning that Reykjavik area is partially built on lava that is really not that old. So like we say often in Iceland about the lava, if it did flow before, it can flow again. And with those words, we move on to Westman Islands out of the south coast of Iceland. The island of Hema erupted by total surprise in 1973 and 5,000 people were moved to the mainland overnight. Luckily, there was no loss of lives. And the town is now a spectacular museum and uh, totally unique since uh, one third of it was buried under lava during the eruption. Now, prior to this eruption in Hema, a new island was created just a few kilometers away or in 1963 when Surtsey Island rose from the seabed where it still is. It's a closed science project today, but huge reminder of the forces that uh, we have in this area. And with that, we move on to the mainland and take a look at Eyjafjallajökull. Now, this is a famous and hard to pronounce uh, volcano that stopped all air traffic for a while and caused international transport chaos. He made a spectacular show that I witnessed myself with my poor camera gear back then. But this is just a tourist volcano if we compare it to the big sister nearby, who is called Katla. And she is the first on the list of the ready to erupt Icelandic volcanoes. But before I go further over Katla, let's listen to Iceland's former president, Mr. Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson, when he warned Europe about it. I think it is high time for European governments and airline authorities all over Europe and the world to start planning for the eventual Katla eruption. The reason of his warning has to do with the fact that Katla is a super volcano. It has this giant caldera with a diameter of 14 times 11 kilometers. This caldera was created with explosions up to 50 times bigger than Eyjafjallajökull can produce and it carried ash layers up to 2000 miles away. Now this caldera, it sits under 4 to 500 meters of ice and there have been 16 eruptions here since the 12th century and the average interval between eruptions is 50 years and the last eruption was 101 years ago. The last Katla eruption was around 3 times bigger than Eyjafjallajökull in 2010. So this is heavily guarded area with live CCTV and SMS warning system for locals and tourists due to the flood risk. Now, some scientists say 
Það er flott ólega vel. Now, there was an eruption in Katla in 2011, but the fire didn't reach the surface. So that is ongoing science debate, but what we do know for sure is a fact that there came a flood from under Katla and it swept away this huge bridge and closed Iceland ring road for a few days. The activity in Katla is actually less now than it was a few years back, so it's quite possible that the 2011 eruption or whatever happened did release some of the pressure, but it's very hard to say. So let's move on and take a good look at the good old Hekla. Now Hekla is a sea, and she is Iceland's most famous and youngest volcano. In Europe during the Middle Ages, it was a widespread idea that Hekla was the entrance to hell. The volcanic belt of Hekla is 40 km long and 7 km wide, meaning that eruptions around the mountain are quite common and there have been 20 known eruptions here during history times. The eruptions can be everything from tourist-friendly piffs up to megablasts, but the last eruption was in the year 2000. A friend of mine was actually hiking there when she opened, and he had to run back very fast, and he has never been back there. So Hekla is quite unpredictable. She gives a short notice before she goes off, and the rest is like a blind date with a box of unknown fireworks. The only thing we know for sure about Hekla now is the fact that she is expanding a whole lot from the pressure in the magma chamber, meaning that hikers from Hekla should bring with them light running shoes rather than heavy barbecue equipment. And with that, we move to the next spot, which is a Langjökull, or Iceland's second largest glacier. Now, we are located at the western roots of the glacier, but there has been earthquake activity here in the last years. Most likely nothing, but this area hasn't been researched all that much. So the point is, this is a true Iceland. Activity comes and goes, and there are plenty of false alarms. And with that, we are going to check out the number three candidate for eruption, or Öravajökull himself. There is a new and good documentary on YouTube now covering Öravajökull, but I can actually update it because the warning level has been lowered on the glacier since then. But just two years ago, warnings were issued about the expansion of the magma chamber, because this is the highest mountain peak of Iceland, or 2110 meters. The main risk with this area has to do with the fact that there can be as little as 20 minutes from eruption until the floodwater reaches the ring road and one of Iceland's hotspots for tourists. So we are talking about an area that in 1362 was literally wiped out and it's been called Öravi Eversins or meaning Wasteland. So it's no question about it that uh, this is now categorized as one of the most dangerous volcanoes in Iceland. But it is, however, nothing compared to the next one we are visiting, or number two, and that would be Grimsvatn. This is Iceland's most active volcano. The last eruption was in 2011, but it was quite tourist friendly. But this is, however, a supervolcano that created a 25 km long fissure with 130 craters in 1783 to 1785. It caused also a drop in global temperatures, as 120 million tons of sulfur dioxide were spewed up and distributed around the globe. The outpouring caused a thick haze to spread across Western Europe, destroying crops, and in fact it's believed that the eruption took up to 2 million lives across the globe due to direct and indirect reasons, but it's been well documented here on YouTube. This brings me also to the personal view of mine if Icelanders are getting enough information, or if we are ready for major eruptions like in 1783, my generation have been extremely lucky. And it worries me even more that Grimsvöld is not our biggest danger, and that brings me to number 5. What we have here is one of the Earth's few hotspots, and that's no ordinary volcano, that's a mega volcano, meaning that the magma is coming from way much more depth 
than in other volcanoes. This is what some call in other words. Other call it the volcano of all volcanoes, but what we know for sure is that the caldera is 85 square kilometers and it's covered with layers of ice up to 900 meters thick, so thick that when there was an eruption there in 2014, it was impossible for the fire to reach the surface, maybe as bad. So in the magma crawl, like you can see on the photo, many kilometers away from the glacier came up there and created the largest lava flow in Iceland since 1783. This was also one of the largest lava flows on Earth for the last centuries. But the big news must be the news that this is just the beginning according to many scientists. Barbara Bunga can do much more than this, but she cannot get the ice off her. She has to smell it. And she is actually topping the earthquake graph that we are seeing here for the last six months. So it's not the people that are worried about this because if she goes off, through the ice, many think that the flood risk is greater than the risk of pollution or fire. It does of course depend on what kind of eruption it would be there. But if we go just over the flood scenario, and that's taking us to this place near the north coast called Ausbirgi, and it's a rather popular tourist destination because of its strange formation. And this formation, or like the ship you see here in the middle, is believed to be the result of a mega flood from exactly this place, Bárðarbunga. And the latest news of Bárðarbunga came just today as I was finishing that this video, or June 25th, 2019. She blasted up some earthquakes at 2.4, but it doesn't have to mean anything. She might blow up tomorrow. She might blow up in 100 years, or 200, nobody knows. But we do know that we have around 5 volcanoes ready for eruption, and on top of that we have the Reykjanes Peninsula ready as well. But I hope I didn't scare you off if you want to visit Iceland, because volcanoes do change their pattern all the time, and that is what makes them so exciting. It is also necessary for you to know that subscribers will have my rescue service if they will pull into a volcano or hot spring. So finally I want to mention that my next video will be all about Icelandic earthquakes, the earthquake history and what's going on now. And with that I'm sending you the best wishes here from the volcanic island.